come back to 4F Beauty? When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that I decided to do something a little different this week. Now, you will have seen from the thumbnail, from the title, and indeed if you have read it from the description, that I decided that I wanted to think how would the Disney villains look if they were good. So, starting with one of my favourites, Madame Ursula. I am now Princess Ursula with my little crown, with my glittery highlight and beauty spot and, you know, sparkly seashells that I picked up and just attached to my face. And I'm off to go and help some poor unfortunate souls. So if you want to find out just exactly how I turned Ursula from bad to good, then you're just going to have to stay tuned. Because here comes the tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, you will have seen from the intro that I'm going to try and get five films out this week. All based on the same kind of thing. All kind of Halloween-y, but kind of kid f party friendly Halloween-y. Look, I suffer from insomnia, I have chronic pain, and at stupid o'clock in the morning this sounded like a good idea, and then I bought all the wigs, and I'm like, okay, I've got to do it now. So, I was thinking, what if a Disney villain was actually good, was actually a Disney princess or prince? How would they look? So, starting with one of the best villains of all time, Ursula, hello, <coughs> love that woman. She's only helping out the uh, poor, unfortunate fools, you know. <coughs> so, I thought, well, how would she look if she was the good girl? I might next year do Disney princesses as Disney villains, I haven't decided yet. But this really intrigued me. And I had that, I bought that um, Revolution, what do they call it, if you've got it, flaunt it, set, cream set. Not realising at the time it was cream, but it's got a purple in it. So I'm like, I could try, but no. And I bought some of these, I bought a bag of these, like, the kind of sponges we used to use before we had beauty blenders. And I thought, well, I could probably. So I'm going to give that a go. Lord help us. So, had a couple of unwanted visitors who are not paying rent, annoyingly. So I've dealt with them. Um, and I've covered up my dark circles and I put my eye primer on. Now, I've already mentioned I have chronic pain. I really, genuinely have trouble. So I can't blend very quickly. I also want absolute beginners to be able to follow this tutorial. So I'm going to go step by step by step. If I am going too slowly for you, up here somewhere is a speed widget. Please use it. Thank you kindly. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Um, I just want to quickly talk you through eye shapes. Yes, I also have melasma and hyperpigmentation areas. 
which you don't normally see because normally I um, <clears throat> I haven't got the concealer on so there's not such a stark contrast. Now I've got deep set eyes which I've recently been heard I've heard them referred to as double lidded. I get the same problem that people with hooded lids get but my lids are not hooded and a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids follow the tricks and tips for hooded lids and it still doesn't work for them because they haven't got hooded lids. So I'm going to talk you through the two different types and an easy tip for how you can follow any YouTube tutorial or any tutorial you see and adapt it for your eye shape. Now, <clears throat> when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner, so I don't have hooded lids. It's only if the static lid completely covers right down to the lash line, all or part of the hooded lid, uh, of the mobile lid that you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now this is the eye that I'm blind with so I'll demonstrate with this eye. If I cover my mobile lid this side, my visible mobile lid, and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again disappears back away. <clears throat> and if I roll it up to cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got a static lid there that disappears back away. And it's those two bits rubbing together that give me the same issue that people with hooded lids get. So, what are the fixes? If you have hooded lids, grab something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. So just use slightly smaller blending brushes and you'll be absolutely fine. <clears throat> When you've got deep set eyes, all you have to do when you're blending colours, <coughs> sorry, change of weather, and it's affecting my arthritis and my fibro and apparently my throat. <coughs> With deep set eyes, what you have to do when you're blending a colour through your crease is every so often sit back, relax your brows, and just check you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. It really is that simple. Right. Let's get on with sticking some colour on. Now Ursula has bright blue and then grey above. So I'm going to grab a couple of my certified palettes. I'm going to go into the Tropical Wonders first. And I think actually I might be able to do it just with this one because Typhoon there and Coast there actually look the perfect shades. Bonus! Don't have to muck about with those of different palettes. Yay! Right. So I'm grabbing one of the um, I've got listed in the description box all my discount codes, including for this eye primer, which is awesome by the way. It's the Chrome Pebble one. Not sponsored, I hasten to add. I mention this every time I use pretty much every film because it's the only eye primer that I use now. It's great, it goes on dry. I just literally swirl a brush like this in the top of it and then just blend it across my eye. doesn't need setting, it's not sticky and you can blend on it straight away. It's brilliant. Um, I also list uh, a little short film about the primer that I use as well as my antiperspirant primer that I'm using today. Because I'm putting that lilac or, or purpley cream all over my face I've actually gone in with this as well, which is the Aldi version of the Smashbox uh, Photos Finish? Photo something primer. But it's really, really silicone based. I think I've got a little mini version of it down here. Yes, I have. It's the, I was right, Photo Finish. See, I have a little mini version of the Smashbox one here. Came in a gift box. Um, because I kind of, I, I want a good barrier between that and my skin because I really don't want to be purple for three days. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to start off, um, I also list brushes, that's what I was getting to. Uh, this is one of the brushes from the AliExpress set, this is blending brush number seven. It's basically a nice round, loosely packed blending brush. And I'm going to go into Typhoon to start with, which is the grey. And I'm just going to start gently building this colour up. I'm not putting too much on the brush straight away because I don't want it to... I want to have a little bit of control about how deep I take it because obviously 
She's not a villain today. She's a princess. Yeah, I just, with my chronic pain and everything, I, um, I really, really struggle with sleeping. And if you've watched some of my more recent films, you'll also know that at the moment I'm struggling with some cellulitis as well, which was brought about by um, a side effect to a med that a doctor tried me on, combined with an allergic reaction to a plant in my mother-in-law's drive, um, ended up as cellulitis, which is so painful. I and mean, it's it's more painful than I even realised it was going to be. I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine, you know. I mean, it was painful anyway. And I thought, oh, the antibiotics, it'll dry up, it'll be absolutely fine. What I didn't realise was that my cellulitis had gone down almost to nerve level. Um, so as it was drying up, it was kind of tightening up all through the layers of skin. Um, and was producing an effect, it was kind of, it was like a combination of the worst sunburn you've ever had, <clears throat> um, added to that gravel rash, added to that someone pouring like petrol or gasoline over it and sending light to the leg. That's roughly what it feels like. And it just happens to be in the leg that is most affected by my fibro that always has burning pins and needles. Over the space of a week, according to my Fitbit, I've got a grand total of seven hours sleep. Not per night, across the seven nights. So, yay. Yay for cellulitis. Um, it made a change actually for my leg to wake me up rather than my back or my hip. But, wake me up it did. I kept thinking, I really should do something for Halloween. I mean, I've, I've done a couple of collabs, and last year I did my Broken Doll tutorial. And obviously for Halloween in July, I did the um, Liquid Latex Zombie Punk Booty Guru. And then of course I've just done A Nightmare on YouTube. And I'm hoping... On the 28th, I'm going to be able to get one up as part of the Skeleton Crew collab as well. Um, <clears throat> so I thought, I really want to do something that's just me on my channel for Halloween. Um, because the Broken Doll last year was part of, um, <laughs> believe it or not, I was in a Facebook group. On a Facebook page, on a beauty page, and we had like a competition there. So even that wasn't... You know, we got given different categories. We, we, we were sort of like randomly drawn into groups and then got given categories and I chose the broken doll category. So I thought, I want to do something that's just just me, just my idea. Just, you know, people may not like it, but I just, I thought it would be different. Right, so I'm cleaning this brush off on a washcloth. I find that's a lot gentler on your brushes, especially if you're using natural brushes, um, <clears throat> than using a um, colour switch. That's what I was groping my tiny little brain for. Well, I've got an e.l.f. blending eye brush here. buff on the <clears throat> so you can see it's still round but it's a bit smaller I'm going to go into the coast shade and now obviously Ursula has a very pronounced part where the blue meets the grey but she's a villain so she's going to have more editorial makeup so I'm going to try and blend this along and blend it into the grey, just so we get a nice transition. <clears throat> I'm really not worried about fallout because obviously I'm putting 
purple on my face shortly. Can't see a damn thing. I hope I'm still on screen. Yeah, good. Do you know I don't think I've actually used this shade yet? I've used a lot of them in this palette, but I haven't used this one. It's really pretty. exactly the same thing on this side. So what have you got planned for Halloween this year? Do you celebrate it or do you celebrate it as uh, Samhain? Because um, my great grandfather was uh, one of the head druids down in Wales. So I've kind of it's weird, I, I have a very, I had a very religious upbringing, but I was also taught about um, respecting the earth and mother nature and all the creatures and everything, and I mean you'll never see me kill a spider in my house, put it that way, ever. Hubby was terrified of them when he first got with me. Now even he sits there going, actually they're quite cute, aren't they? Yes they are. And they eat a lot of other nasty bugs that we don't want in the house. So people go, oh my god, look at that cobweb. I'm like, yes, it's the spider's home. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're clean. But there's one particular, I mean, there's a cobweb on my back door at the moment. And the spider's so cold. I don't want to disturb her home. Uh, and she's already killed three moths for me, so I'm quite happy about that, because I don't like moths. Nasty things flying in your face. Um, one thing you do need to do, because unless you're James Charles and you're then going to photoshop it afterwards, your eyes are not symmetrical. So it's always a good plan just to sit back and just check that if you've done a curve here, it matches the curve this side. Sometimes the two shapes do have to be ever so slightly different on both eye in order to look the same. I know that sounds bizarre, but trust me when I say it, it, it really is true. And that's me knocking loads of palettes flying. Oh, I was really annoyed. I've been sorting my palettes out. And there's one palette which I know for a fact wasn't damaged. And it's only been in the storage bin that I've got over here. And I opened it up today, and it's my LA Splash Classic Horror. And look, the black is completely shot. I have no idea how that happened. But I have been asked to show how you repress shadows, so I'll do that with that one. But it's really annoying because I was going to use that today. Mm. Right. Uh, I think it's time to try and slap some of this purple on. Let's zoom you back out a bit, just so that you can see what's going on a bit more. Now what I might do when I'm putting this on is uh, I might speed the film up. Because normally I would do foundation and stuff off camera. So the film's not too long. So I might why is that going patchy? I've got a silicon based primer underneath. I may have to dust over it with some uh, 
some purple eyeshadow maybe. Did not want to waste one of my beauty blenders and get that all stained. I mean they're all stained with foundation anyway but I didn't want them particularly stained purple. Hence why I bought these little makeup sponges. Right, I think actually I'll pause you and I'll continue to chuck all this all over my face. Um, I'll do my brows and then I'll come back. You can, you can see what's happening here. Right, okay, so as you can see I used the light purple everywhere. Then I went in with this deeper purple to do a little bit of a contour. Used the red for a blush which completely screwed the whole look up. So I then went back over it again. <laughs> with the lilac. Um, I then set it very carefully with um, Jeffree Star Fair powder and then I went over the top with some of this Wet n Wild Reserve Your Cabana bronzer but this is like a dupe for the hourglass ambient lighting. It um, just gives you a little bit of a bit of a glow. I did that and then I went in with this Coty Airspun loose highlighter in shade Pink Me Up. Um, I used my purple Revolution brow pomade and now I'm going to zoom you in while I finish off this eye look. Let me grab a brush, zoom you in. Hello. Right. Back into the same eye palette. I'm going to pick up the grey with a tiny little dab of the black on top as well. Just to come underneath lower lash line here and just smudge this is that flat top brush I showed you earlier I love this for getting right close under your lashes I'll grab my other favourite brush from the lashes. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But it's great because it's flat topped and it's chunky. So it's great for getting up under those lashes. And just giving it a gentle buff. Like so. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time, I'm going to chuck some mascara on, I'm going to put some red lipstick on, I'm going to do something with the hair, you've already heard me mention the word wig, and I'll be right back. And there you go, here is my Ursula as a princess. Now as a princess obviously I've given her the beautiful long flowing locks rather than that really gorgeous pixie cut that she has. I went in with my Jeffrey um, Red Rum and just above the brows on the highlight and on my beauty spot I recently bought Pat McGrath Lippy on sale and I kept the sequins and I've literally just glued them on with some glitter glue. So here is Ursula if she were good. So I really hope you enjoyed this. If you're one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. So helpful. Ooh I've forgotten something. 
How could I forget? Ursula's princess crown. Yay. Let me go. Now, I truly do feel like a Disney princess. Kind of crossed with Violet by regard. Narcissistic montage moment. I can't do that crap. Right, once you double checked you're subscribed and you've liked and you've commented and maybe even shared this video. Uh, there's an awful lot more you can watch. Uh, if uh, if this is the first of the if they were oh god this wig is so itchy. If this is the first of my if they were good series that you've watched, why not have a peep and see if there's any others ready? If not, then you know. Ring that notification bell and hopefully Mr. YouTube will tell you when the next one goes up. So, I'm off to go and help some poor, unfortunate souls. So I'll see you next time. <laughs> Seriously though, you'll stay fabulous. And I really will see you.